K2S, which stands for Hypermedia as the Engine of Application State, is an important constraint when building RESTful APIs. Hypermedia refers to having links to other resources in your API, and it makes your API more discoverable and easier to use. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement K2S in a RESTful API and why it's valuable. Let's start off by building a simple proof of concept to understand what K2S is and how we can implement it and then we're going to evolve it to make the implementation more robust. K2S refers to having links to other resources in your API, so let's introduce a record to represent the link in our API response. A link should have three properties to satisfy K2S standards, so the first property is href. This is a completely valid URI pointing to some resource or endpoint in your API. The second thing is going to be the rel value. It refers to what the link is related to. It could be a link to delete the resource and the rel value would contain the contextual information. And the last thing is the method, which is the HTTP verb that should be used for this resource URI. With the link in place, let's introduce another property on the product response, which is going to be a list of links and let's just call it links and I'm going to give it a public getter and setter and by default it's just going to be an empty list. I'll head over to the products endpoints file where I'm defining my endpoints and here we're going to implement a proof of concept really quickly. So I want to focus on this endpoint here where I'm fetching the product by the ID. I'm going to move all of this into a product response variable and now we have access to the list of links on this response. So let's start off by adding the links one by one. The first thing we're going to need is to inject a few more services into the request delegate. So let's add the link generator service, which we're going to use to generate the URIs. So let's call it link generator. And I'm also going to need the HTTP context. So let's go ahead and inject that so that I can pass it to the link generator to be able to generate the proper URIs. The first link I'm going to create is going to point to this resource that I'm fetching. So let's create a new link object and I need to pass it the href value, which is the fully built URI, the rel value and the method. For the href value, I'm going to use the link generator and on it there are a bunch of methods that you can use to generate the link. Let's choose the get URI by name method and I'm going to use the endpoint name to pass it to this method. First, I need to decorate my endpoint with a name, so I'm going to call the with name method, and let's call it get product. Now that my endpoint has a name, let's use it to build this URI. So I'm going to pass it the HTTP context, then I'm going to pass in my endpoint name, which is get product, and then I need to pass in any route values that are important, and the one I'm interested in is my product ID. This should be enough to generate the link properly. Let's add the rel value, which should point to self. This is a standard and it communicates that this link is related to the same resource. And the method that I'm going to pass is the get method. You could create some constants for all of these because we're going to be repeating them a few times, but for now, let's leave it like this. Let's add a few more links that could be interesting. So the next link I'm going to add is going to be for the put endpoint. I'm going to give it a name of update product. And now I can refer to it when creating a link. So here I'm going to say update product. And I'm already passing in the HTTP context and the ID required to generate the URI. The rel value is going to refer to the update product method so that the consumer of this API knows that this is a link to update the product and the HTTP method is put. And let's add one more link, which is going to refer to the delete endpoint. Let's give it a name of delete product. And now I can use this in the get URI by name to refer to this endpoint. This is going to be the delete product rel value and the HTTP method is delete. Awesome. Let's try to fetch a single product from the API and see what the response looks like. I'm sending a GET request from Postman to our API for the product with this ID, and here's the response that we get back. So this is the default information required for our product, 
and then we have the links array that we just added and inside of it we have three links so you can see that these are nicely formatted the address is localhost 5001 the route is products and then the route just contains the product id so we have the self link to get this same resource then there's the link for updating the product which is a put endpoint and then the link for deleting a product which is the delete endpoint if someone wants to consume our api they would need to have internal knowledge of what the endpoints look like to be able to use them correctly so they need to know that there exists a get endpoint a put endpoint a delete endpoint and a post endpoint and so on and this becomes more complex the bigger the api is or an alternative to that is HateOS. HateOS, as I mentioned, stands for Hypermedia as the engine of application state. This essentially means that you're going to include Hypermedia links to the various resources that are available in your API, and then the consumer is able to know, okay, I just got the product, and these are the links that are available on this API for what I can do with this product. So I can get this same instance by using this link, or I can update the product by using this link, or I can delete the product by using this link. And this collection can grow as your API evolves and the consumer is able to react to this and adapt accordingly. Now we know that our proof of concept is working, so let's move the link generation into the application project and I'm going to start off by creating an abstraction that is going to be responsible for generating the links. I'm going to create a new folder in the application project and let's just call it abstractions. Inside of it, I'm going to add a new interface, which I can call I link service. For example, it's only going to have one method that will be returning a link instance. And let's call the method generate. This method is going to need the endpoint name, an object representing the route values and it could be nullable then it's going to need the rel value and the method that's going to be used to create the link i'm going to take the link type itself and move it into a separate file and then i'm going to move the file into the abstractions folder now let's go ahead and take the link generation logic that was previously in our endpoint and let's move it into the query handler so I'm going to create a new method here, which is going to be a private void method. And let's call it add links for product. I'm going to pass it a product response object. And let's copy the code that was previously in our endpoint. We're going to be using our iLink service. So let's go ahead and inject that. So I'm going to say private read only iLink service and let's inject it from the constructor. And now in my method for adding the links for the product, I'm going to say link service generate. And for the endpoint name, let's first pass get product. Then for the ID, which is a part of the route, I'm going to pass that from the product response ID. Let me align this vertically so that we can see the individual arguments. We no longer need to actually call the link constructor. We can just call the method on the link service. This should be enough to generate the link for getting the product. I'm going to copy this two more times and I'm going to adjust it for the remaining two endpoints. So the next one is update product. The method is put and the route value is update product. And the last one is delete product. The method is delete and the endpoint name is delete product. You will need to hard code your endpoint names like this to be able to generate your links from the application layer, but you could move these into some constants and then reuse them in the endpoints themselves when you are defining the actual name of the endpoint. Now, the next thing we need is to actually implement the link service. I'm going to add the implementation in the web API project where I'm going to add a services folder and inside of it, I'm going to define a link service class. So link service, I'll make this internal and sealed and it's going to implement the iLink service from our application layer. 
Now this is going to need two things to be able to function. One is the link generator that we used previously in our minimal API endpoint. And the second thing is the iHttp context accessor to get the current HTTP context instance. So I'm going to call it HTTP context accessor and let's generate the constructor. To generate a link, I'm just going to return a new link. The link itself is going to come from link generator, get URI by name. We're going to pass it the HTTP context and we also need the endpoint name and the route values. And for the other values in the link constructor, we need to pass the rel and the method. And now we get our link back. Let's register this with dependency injection. I'm going to define it as a scoped service since it's relying on the HTTP context and that's only available in the scope of a single HTTP request. So let's say add scoped I link service and link service as the implementation. Because we are using the HTTP context accessor, make sure to include a call to add HTTP context accessor to register the required service. So with this in place, we just need to call this method that we just defined in our query handler, pass it the product, and it should populate the links before we return them from the API. So let's see if this is working. Let's send the request to our API. We get back the response. The links are still there, like in our proof of concept, and we are implementing H2S in our API. One more thing that could be interesting is the get products query handler which returns a page list of products from our API. The value here would be to include links for the next and the previous page in the actual response. So this is currently returning a paged list of T, which is a generic list. It's just a wrapper around a list of items, which are the actual values returned for the current page, and also some contextual information like if it has a next or a previous page. So it would be really valuable to include the links as part of this response. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to make things simple and just add a list of link properties. I'm going to call it links and let's give it an empty list as the default value. So back in our query handler, let's add a new method here, which can be a private void method and let's call it add links for paged products. We're going to pass it the paged list of product responses. I'll give it a name of product and let's see what we should put inside. I'm going to need the iLink service injected into my constructor to be able to create the links. So let's add the iLink service and back in our method, we need to add the links for the previous and next page. So we're only going to do that if the product has a next page, then let's add a link referring to the next page of products. This is going to be products and access the links list. And let's add a new link, which is going to point to the next page of products by calling the link service generate method. So I'll move this into a new line to make it slightly more visible. And the first thing we need is the endpoint name. So let's call it get products. And I'm not going to forget to include this in my actual endpoint so that it works at runtime. Then we need to pass the route values. If I go to my endpoints where I have the get products endpoint, it has quite a few values. It has the search term, the sort column and order, and then the page and page size query parameters. So this is what we're going to need to include in our object that is used to pass the route values. So let's add the name here while we're at it and let's pass it the get products value, the same one that we're using in our links. And now we need to pass an object containing these values. So I'm going to copy this and head back to my get products query handler. And we need a new object created here. So now I have the individual properties. So I want to set the search term value, but where do I get it from? Well, I'm going to need to pass the get products query to be able to use it to generate my links. So let's add that as another argument here. So query, and we're going to now take the query search term and pass it to the parameter that is going to be used to generate our link. 
let's do the same for the sort column and the remaining properties so let's pass the sort column then we have the sort order so this can be either ascending or descending so let's use sort order that was already passed in then let's pass the page now this one is tricky because we want to be passing the next page of products because this is a link to fetch the next page so we're going to use query page and add it one for the page size we're going to use whatever was already passed in to the query so let's just pass in page size and then we need to pass the rel value which is going to say next page and for the method it's going to be get so we finally have a link that's pointing to the next page of products let's also do one more for has previous page i'm going to update this to say previous page in the rel value of the link and the page is going to be whatever was the current page minus one let's also add one more link that's going to point to this resource so we're going to say self and you're just going to use the original arguments that were passed to the endpoint so no changing the page or page size or any of the other arguments and lastly we just need to call this before we return it from the method so add links for page products and we're going to pass it the query and the actual page list so let's see if this is working i'm sending a get request to the api to get the first page of five products and i'm sorting it by the amount column so let's send this to the api and we get back the response so let's examine what we have inside so in the items array i have the five products that match this query and then we have the contextual information which refers to the page and page size the total count of products and if there is a next or previous page and then we have the important part which are the links that we can use to explore our api further so here's the first link which points to this resource itself you'll see that it matches the route that we have above which we used originally to get this list of products but there's also this link here that we can use to get the next list of products so let's actually copy this value let's create another get request and i'm just going to paste in the link that we got from our previous response let's now send this request and see what we get back so now we get back another list of products and in the links you'll see that it changes now we have the link to the same resource and there's also the link for the previous resource i'm going to modify this request slightly and i'm going to say that the page size is two and give me back the second page let's send this request and let's examine the links that we get back so now we have both a next page and the previous page link and they're both valid and we can use them to go through our api so now i can get the previous page by using this link and i can also get the next page of products and you'll notice that the page is set to free you can see how hate os is really powerful and it's adding a lot of additional information to the api response and what i could also do is update the product response here and include the links that we also had on the individual product resource like the put and delete endpoint and really make our api self-documenting if you enjoyed this video about hate os then the first thing you should do is smash that like button and then go ahead and watch this video next and until next time stay awesome